What's happening, everybody? So my name is Sergio. They call me Lucy Drop in the gloving community. And I am doing this video because I was reached out by an Indian Glover named Starflow. So shout out to Starflow. Thanks for uh, reaching out and asking these questions. But yeah, I'm going to answer a couple questions that he sent me. I'm going to put it on video and hopefully you guys get to know a little bit about me and my story. So let's get into it. Uh, first question that he wanted to know is where are you from and where do you currently stay? So. I was born and raised in Los Angeles County, and the majority of my life, I was I basically grew up in Huntington Park, which is a small city um, filled with a lot of like Latinos, Mexicans, Salvadorians, and a lot of Latin America. So that is like a little Mexico. We we like to call that city a little Mexico, but it borders, you know, other cities like Southgate, Compton, South Central LA, Watts, and those areas like Vernon also Vernon is more factory so there's not a lot of people that live there but uh, that's just a little mix of cities that it's around HP or Huntington Park now uh, during high school I actually was homeless uh, for the majority of high school um, my mom uh, was a single mother my dad it, like left the country uh, could well back background story from my from my family I guess um, they're Mexicans. Uh, my mom was born here, but uh, she's first generation and my dad was full on Mexican. He like immigrated here, but um, they had me, you know, they had a baby and my dad couldn't support and, you know, the family and, and all that. So um, due to the fact that he couldn't really get a good job because they didn't have papers and all this drama that happened between my mom and my, my dad, you know, they split, had a divorce, and he fled the country. So I grew up with my moms. My moms didn't really, uh, well, she really had a hard time just like sticking to a job and holding a job for a very long time. So um, we were homeless during, during high school time. And during this time, I lived in all kinds of different locations in the LA district. So I, that's why I say like, I grew up in LA cause like I literally grew up in different cities in LA. Like I lived in Long Beach. I lived in East LA, specifically Boyle Heights, North Hollywood. And to the ending of like my community college life, I grew up in Watts. So yeah, in, uh, in the city of LA, those cities are considered ghetto, but Honestly, I'm fucking grateful because if I grew up in a ghetto in a different place in a different part of the world, like it would be worse, you know, like even though I had it quote unquote bad growing up in the hood of LA, I feel like I still had it good because I've had a lot of um, opportunities in the city on uh, networking with people and just motivation because like the city is always moving. Everybody's trying to hustle and get out that like it puts you in a mindset where it's like you can't let shit like that bring you down you know and you kind of just have to get through it okay so currently i am living in northridge california which is in the san fernando valley it's still in la county but um the vibes are totally different i moved out here last year in july and i came out here for school um i'm studying psychology but i I came out here for school and in the vibes, like I said, it's just totally different. Like I can go outside and I don't have to fear, um, you know, getting robbed or, you know, being a witness to a mugging or fucking gang activity, you know, that just happens outside your doorstep. And like, I know it's kind of weird to even think that that does happen, but it does. It fucking does happen. You know, like shit is just out loud in certain areas and then over here there's still gangs in the san fernando valley but it's more quiet like i don't see it it's not out there it's not out loud you know what i mean so i feel safe it feels good and i feel proud of myself like basically from where i came to where i'm at now um and i'm doing this all on my own so you know i just feel proud so i appreciate the question and let's move on to the next one okay so the next question is when and how did you start gloving so my earliest memory of gloving was back in like 2009 2010 around there uh, just because um, 
I fell into the rave scene like by accident because I was a punk rock kid skateboarding since second grade you know and I used to go to a lot of ska shows a lot of punk shows I even went into hardcore shows for a little bit but I fell into raving um, because of certain friends and business opportunities that we got involved in during high school so that is where I first saw gloving <laughs> in warehouse raves and online on YouTube yeah YouTube was was like the biggest source of gloving that that I was exposed to now during these times um, I didn't know anybody else who gloved so I gloved uh, because I was into shuffling I was also into like tectonic jump style and all kinds of other dances because I just love dancing and um, you know gloving just came with it because of you know the whole atmosphere and the people that you meet and stuff so I learned how to glove through YouTube through the amazing lights tutorials I learned how to do finger rolls I learned how to do figure eights I learned how to do um, whips and just the basic understanding of like flip um, flails but I never got good at it I just kind of did it for fun for people that were doing um, party favors and stuff just to entertain them and stuff like that but I never got into it because I didn't um, I didn't have any friends that were into it like most of my friends like shuffling so I did that more than I did gloving back during those times um, people that I used to watch uh, were AO like anybody from AO I loved their whole their whole like every content that they've made it it resembled uh, like very hood atmosphere and because I grew in the grew up in the hood like I, re I resonated with that so I loved watching AO PM Glovers were good too and also Team Vivid was very big back in the day too uh, so I used to watch Team Vivid a lot and um, yeah I got my first glove set through orbitlightshows.com which doesn't even exist anymore so yeah that was the first time I ever saw gloving now I still consider myself a new gen Glover just because I did learn the fundamentals back in the day doesn't mean that I felt like I was a Glover then because I was more into shuffling and, and uh, tectonic and jump style so um, that was just like an, an extra thing that I that I knew how to do or at least the foundation but it wasn't until 2017 where I saw lights on the competition uh, which is a gloving competition which is all online and that's when I it's like I was super like mesmerized because people were doing things that like I've never seen before from back then so like they were just way better and I was so surprised that people were actually making money off of this because back then people just did this you know for druggies so like I got excited and I was like oh well maybe I can try to you know win a competition and make some money super naive but I was like why not why not me you know now during this time in 2017 I wasn't in the best like mental state because like I was in a relationship that you know lasted about six years we lived together and it was just I was just very like just obsessed with saving that rela relationship because I'm not gonna lie, I fucked up in the beginning, I was, <sighs> I fucked up, I let my temptation, my lust get the best of me and I cheated and I totally, totally regret hurting that person because she didn't deserve the pain that she went through, but throughout that time I was trying to um, fix things, which you know it's hard to fix things when you break someone's trust like that especially when you've been together for so long and you've built a foundation of of just telling yourself that you're super against cheating especially like me like I've I was super against cheating because of the fact that my dad cheated on my mother so like it was hard for me to 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 accept the fact that I fell into the same trap that my dad did and I ended up confessing um, to her. I wanted to be real, like, you know, if we are gonna spend the rest of our lives together, I want you to know everything 
the bad and the good. And if you like me, then we'll pursue. If you don't, then, you know, then that's just the way the cookie crumbles. Unfortunately, the cookie crumbled. <laughs> and I was pretty sad um, during that time. But leading up to that breakup, I ended up losing my job as well. Like I graduated from community college, started working for a bank, Wells Fargo Bank as a personal banker, made good money. Um, but because I was so absorbed in trying to save like my relationship, it took away from like the focus of doing my job. And I ended up losing my job because I kept showing up late to work, whether it was like late nights arguing with my ex or just me just not wanting to go because I didn't have the motivation to because I was doing a job that I just didn't want to do. Yeah, it was just a lot. It was just a lot of uh, mental, mental issues. But once she broke up with me and I didn't have a job, I fell into gloving. I fell into gloving because it it helped me cope with, you know, just abandonment issues, just depression, anxiety of not knowing what the future had in store for me. But it also gave me something to do while I waited for my next step, which was going back to school. So that's why I ended up moving out and coming to CSUN, Northridge, and yeah, I live out on my own. I rent a room, you know, but her leaving was probably the best thing that she could have done for me because I wasn't happy and she knew it. And it put me on this journey. It put me in front of a camera to basically display the, to the world what I can do with my hands and people started to like like it on Instagram and it slowly like motivated me to continue uh, developing this uh, this craft and this love that I had for this dance that I kind of overlooked for so many years you know okay so for this next question this is a pretty fun one um, he asked me to define gloving, so here's a crack at me trying to define uh, what gloving is in my perspective. So, gloving is a dance that is performed to a single person that can be very intimate. So it's just a one-on-one -on -one display of your skills to a single person. You, you could give a show to a crowd, but you're not going to get the same effect of a real light show if you're giving a show to a crowd compared to a single person. So I feel like that is very important when it comes to defining what a, a, a light show is. But um, the goal is to stimulate the viewer's perception using dexterity and depth perception. And that's very key because um, that's I feel like what distinguishes the difference between a finger stylist and a glover because like when finger styles you're kind of just using the geometrical grid and everything but you're not focusing on the on the perception of the viewer because you're not giving just a single person show you know what i mean with a light show um you're using a lot of depth perception using a lot of um playing with the visual eyes of because you're like this is why we use fucking fish eyes you know so it can make it seem like we're giving a show to an actual person like the eyes and everything you being able to to distinguish how far something is from another like that's very important when it comes to giving a light show compared to just you know throwing tuts and stuff but okay i'm digressing let me continue your job as a glover is to tell a story with the music so musicality, showmanship, creativity, and complexity are all important while giving a show. The show must feel submersive. So basically dark, you, the lights, and music. And we try to absorb people in that. So they don't see anything else but the lights that are in their face. And we try to just match the, the movements to the beat. And that's basically my definition of what a light show is. And yes, I took the time to write it down because, you know, it's, <laughs> it's just easier. Okay, so next question is, what is your gloving style? So 
there is a bunch of different styles in gloving. So if you guys are brand new to gloving um, and you guys are still learning your flow, there is a bunch of different ways to approach gloving. And my way, the way that I was introduced to it was very OG mentality because of the foundations that I learned back in the day. And it, that made my style very flowy. Now, a flow-based style is a style that basically involves not stopping if that makes sense i don't even know if, if this is like an accurate definition of a flow style but from my opinion i call it flowy because i carry this liquid motion everywhere in my show and i mean that um in my tuts i mean that in my whips in my flails everything is in a constant motion when I throw tuts, I present them in this flowy motion of circles. I unravel it and put it in into place. Like I unravel it, throw some whips and stuff, and then bring it back into like tuts. But I'm still moving, constantly moving. One of the things that I learned a long time ago from old school, like you know, interactions with glovers. I wouldn't want to say OGs because. I never met any of the of the OGs until recently. So like all the other people were just kind of randoms that gloved, you know, but um, they would tell me don't ever stop moving because then it would get boring. And I guess that is what constituted an OG flow because you're continuously throwing trails. Like you never stop throwing trails even when you're throwing tuts. Like I throw these like circles in my tuts because it's still a constant trail. Like you're still doing that hypnosis, that circular hypnosis where you're just leading and moving, push and pull, flow. Don't think, just flow. That's my style. Okay, so the next question ties into the last one and he's asking, how does one find their gloving style? So if you're brand new to gloving and you're trying to figure out a style, look at the people that you're watching. So if you're watching a lot of mimic, then you love a lot of digits. You love a lot of old school flow finger rolls. You know, you have you you like that old school stuff because you're watching like certain type of glover, right? Or, you know, you could be a new gen glover that's like really into long and like long throws a lot of tuts and musicality. So maybe you can just like focus your flow on musicality and like tuts you know but it's all about trial and error you know do things that you feel are fun watch people that you enjoy watching and you know just adapt learn from their flow in integrate it into your flow make it your own throw some new shit out there and then you know eventually you're gonna find your flow so that's the advice so in this question, he's asking for my gloving achievements. Um, sadly, I have I don't really have much gloving achievements other than the fact that I got out of my lazy ass and started recording videos, you know. <laughs> but fuck, dude, like honestly, um, gloving achievements. I guess like in a in a perspective of somebody that's brand new that doesn't really know much about gloving, I guess one of the main things that I've achieved is getting onto face melt crew because. When I was younger, um, everybody like fucking knew about like face melt crews, you know, it's just like, whoa, you know, the elite glovers and everything, all that bullshit and everything. But it's just, um, it was just marketing, you know, I'm able to market myself, able to, you know, like just be able to produce content and everything. That's what really got me in to that um, atmosphere, but I'm not actually um, <coughs> quote unquote good. You know, like there's a lot of people that are way better than me that have never been on face mail crew, you know? So it's more about playing the game, um, the online marketing, social media aspect of it. But yeah, um, face mail crew is a big achievement. Also something that I would consider an achievement, even though it didn't grow big, like as big as I wanted it to was uh, my gloving brand. Um, I started a print on demand company that basically sold graphic tees, sweaters, mugs pillows that involved the gloving community and this actually did make a couple good sales and um i donated some of the profit to to charity that basically helped to prevent suicides and depression reason why i chose that specific niche is because 
I had a gloving friend that killed himself last year after Beyond Wonderland and that affected me heavily um, especially because like he was going through a lot of similar stuff that I was going through because he had just gotten out of a breakup too but he ended up choosing to take his own life and I didn't want to see that again I didn't want to see any more people who make beautiful art take their own life because of exterior you know things that happen to them in their life you know because everything is all about perception so if you're able to change you on the inside you're able to change the world so i don't want to see any more lights permanently turned off and that's the reason why i started that gloving company but i'm in depth i'm being out and honest right now i'm in depth after the breakup i put myself in a very large amount of depth which i'm currently paying off and I currently am not able to put my full focus and attention on that company because I am working to pay that off. So that's the reason why I had to close up shop. I still see that as an achievement due to the fact that I did what I set out to do. Now, other than that, you know, lights on. I only made it to top 16 twice, which is a good you know i guess an okay achievement i didn't win but i at least went to top 16 twice um first time i ever joined i got eliminated first round so you know i'm slowly getting better but i'm i would say that the achievements are still yet to come like i will i will be making bigger moves and i hope i achieve greater things than what i've already done okay so next question is what is your gloving secret now i don't have a gloving secret other than the fact that cheat codes cheat codes cheat codes mushrooms and lucy but i'm not gonna go into it i'm not gonna explain what i mean because it's a secret but for those that know cheat codes cheat codes cheat codes that's my secret all right so uh next question would be what keeps you inspired and that is a little bit of a lot of things i don't know man because like um i've already had thoughts of just leaving gloving like just deleting all of my shit and just disappearing like i felt like i i've done enough i was like i've met enough people and like i'm happy with what i've done for the community and then i was just like having thoughts of just like disappearing but i feel like you know what for what you know like <laughs> i just feel like you know what, what for so the reason why i'm still inspired to glove is one is because of my friends that are in the community um they produce content all the time we have labs online um so if you guys are brand new to gloving i'm gonna promote this right now worldwide glovers we have a discord where we teach and educate new glovers how to properly throw shows um to you know expand on different concepts um you know share our knowledge have them even share knowledge with us you know because sometimes these little like newbies end up just experimenting to the point where they come up with things that we couldn't come up with and then we just kind of spitball and stuff like that so worldwide glovers okay you have a discord so if you guys don't know go to instagram go dm me or go dm worldwide glovers directly and we'll shoot you the link so you can join so you can learn how to glove and stuff like that with other people that are brand new or you know actually experienced also so you know we got a little bit of everything worldwide glovers um other things that keep me inspired is good music like honestly sometimes i have a hard time gloving because i don't have any new music like i'm so stuck on old songs and then like i start listening to some of the stuff that gets produced now and i just don't fall into it that much you know so it just takes good music and good people and this community man this fucking community how like just the way you know that people support is fucking phenomenal it's like you know it's part of the rave scene the whole blur vibe like it's found in gloving like a lot of a lot of these glovers are just good hearted people so reach out you know reach out to people and you know you get you get things like this you get fucking q and a's and and stuff you know so that's what keeps me inspired the community the people and the music
Okay, so last question. Best advice you can give out to other Glovers. Um, keep creating, dude. Like, who gives a shit what's happening on the outside world? Like, just keep fucking creating, you know? The more you create, the more people will be exposed to this art. The more people will start lowering their stigma towards how negative it is viewed through like drugs and stuff like that so just keep creating you know don't value other people's opinions as much as yours you know like there's a lot of people that are really good in the community and if i overvalued their opinion i probably would have never asked them to trade you know so it was more you know of just getting out there com communicate with others you know and just network with other people we need more collabs definitely we need a lot more you know people just doing shit together like gloving wise because there's a shitload of glovers in la but you know none of us really fucking connect with one another like we really don't san diego has a great community you know people can learn a lot from the san diego community so other than that i really don't have much advice you know shark bay would hate me you know rj would hate me for saying this but slow down <laughs> i i saw his little live stream with uh with vex and stuff and like one of the things that he said is that like he hates when people give that advice to slow down but honestly i feel like that's the best fucking advice anybody has ever gave me and i still have not yet slowed my shit down as far as i want to i want to get flows and slow if you guys don't know gian go fucking look him up he's a texas glover who flows very slow and methodically everything looks clean beautiful fucking show that's what i inspire my shows you know like slow wise that's why when i started gloving again i started watching a lot of stacks so slow down you're gonna see a lot of connections that you would have never seen if you sped up also it gets your shit cleaner so you're not just throwing tech vomit yeah you can be a fucking good like glover with all this dexterity but because the connections aren't clean the show looks messy and it's not as eye peeling my personal subjective opinion but yeah that's advice that i would give to any other glover and finally, thanks for taking the time to ask these questions, you know, reach out to me and like, you know, I'd want to learn a little bit more about me and my, you know, loving journey. But um, I'm here. I'm open to any other questions. You know, I'm happy to do this video. This video was pretty fun to actually make. But yeah, hopefully this this journey just gets better from here on out. So talk to you guys later. Follow me on IG at Lucy underscore drop on Instagram. I'm also Lucy Drop One Word on TikTok. Um, I made a Twitter. Also, if you guys are you know into Twitter, I'll put all the links and everything on the description below. And definitely give my fucking YouTube a subscribe. You know, like there has been a lot of love on YouTube. Thank you guys so much. I'm almost like I'm getting close to a thousand subscribers on YouTube, which is fucking surreal. You know, I'm not there yet, but like I know that it's gonna happen. Like, I can see it happening, so. But yeah, guys, that's it, guys. It's fun. Thank you for watching. I'm done.